All right, so today we have a chemistry question of the day, um, and it asks, in the following reaction, what should we do to get more product? Um, and it gives us this combustion reaction. So there's a couple of things to note here. Um, when we look at this, we see increased temperature, volume, and we take away product or a uh, reactant actually. Um, so when we deal with temperature, the one thing we always want to look at is whether or not it's exothermic or endothermic. Um, for volume, we definitely want to look at the gases. So that's something to be aware of. Um, so we're going to start and, and just define what this problem type is, and it's Le Chatelier's principle. Um, Le Chatelier's principle just says that chemical reactions will always react to reverse changes. And we'll see what exactly we mean by that. Um, so when we add or subtract something, when we add a certain things, for example, if we add C2H6, it will want to go to the right. So if we added C2H6, it will want to go to the right. If we subtract C2H6, it will want to go that way because it will always want to reverse whatever change we made. Um, likewise, say we increase CO2, it wants to go in the opposite direction. And you guys can kind of get the idea for that one. And so now we're going to deal with temperature. Um, so for temperature, the one thing that we have to remember is that the delta H was negative 36. Okay? So if it's negative 36, that means it's exothermic or endothermic. We would know that heat would be on the right side because it's negative, meaning it's exothermic. So negative delta H, positive delta H for endothermic reactions. Um, so negative delta H would be um, heat on the right side. So this is pretty much the same. We can think of this like a, re uh, like a product. We pretty much can assume it like a product. So if we increase the, the temperature, we're increasing heat. We're going to want to go in that direction, right? If we're decreasing the heat, we're going to want to reverse those changes and go to the right. So we think of it exactly like a product. Um, and if it's an endothermic reaction, we think of it exactly like a reactant. All right? And so the final one we're going to look at is the volume and pressure. So when we're increasing um, volume, we're going to decrease pressure. That's because P1, V1 equals P2, V2, so they're inversely related. Um, so when you increase one, you will decrease the other. Um, and when we decrease the pressure, this is where we kind of have to think for a little bit. Um, so we, we're only looking at gases because pressure is only affected um, for gases only. Um, so when we decrease the pressure, this is going to favor the side with more moles of gas. So let's think why that might be true. So when we decrease the pressure, um, that means that we're going to want to have something where now things can move around a lot more. There's not much pressure um, confining them to a small area. But when we increase the pressure, okay, so now we have, a, think of it as a very tight ball. Now we increase the pressure here. They're going to want to go to somewhere that has less moles of it because then that will decrease the pressure, right? We always want to reverse the changes. So if we increase the pressure, we want to somehow decrease the pressure. And the only way to do that is if we go to the side with less moles of gas. Um, so let's see, if we decrease the volume, we're going to want to go to the side with less moles of gas. So this is 3.5 and this is 2. So go to the right. Okay. Um, and if we increase the volume, it will want to go to the left. And so notice how I didn't put C2H6 or H2O. That's because this is a solid, that's a liquid, so they don't uh, affect this situation. So if we go back and remember from before, um, three of these should favor the, pro the reactants and one of them should favor the product. Um, so one, one little trick that you should also know is that um, this is generally true, um, but when we see opposites, we know one of them pretty much generally should always be right. Um, and if we were to go through both of these, we would notice that from before they both favored the reactants. And you just have to look back to what we did before. And in this situation, well, let's just do it really quickly. We have heat on this side, right? So we have heat on this side. 
In order to get more products, we will want to do something that reverses the change. So we want to decrease the heat so that they would want to produce more heat. So this is your answer right there. You want to decrease the temperature so that you can reverse that change um, and you'll produce more product. Because in the meantime, while you're making more heat, you're also making more product. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.